Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The role of color darkness in Fitiliko basically. So, so it's, it's a, a like a wonderful subject, subject, rather colorful subject, rather I will tell. And my job is half done by Oswal well, sir. He has already put already, already the and all settings and all these things already, been put, already been put by him. Why doctor? So why doctor in Fitiliko actually? Uh, if you want to get a better answer, it should be always with a better question actually. All about the so it's all about the fetal circulations, uh, fetal lungs and placenta. There is a correlation always, and there are three fetal communications. One is doctor Spencer. Ductus ductus acrius and as well as foramen ovale. These three compasses. actually encompasses to go for the fetal circulation. So there is always a low saturation, low placental circulation inside the fetus with a high pulmonary rate and right ventricular pump is there. So it is actually neonatal part and the fetal part. There is a gross difference. Actually, the fetal part if the circuit is the parallel and the neonatal part is the seals. So there is a science. There is a sites of gas exchange. So there is a perfusion rate differences. Heart rate is differences. Vascular resistance is also there is, there is much difference. So there is an ups and downs for the vascular pressure, ups and downs in the blood flow, ups and downs of the hemodynamic itself and the forward and backward directed flow. So this all actually I will get put into the box of the color flow to assess the structural as well as the hemodynamic part simultaneously. So that's why it is very necessary to uh, this is all about the in a very lively matter, diagnose everything. So, this is, so this is the basically, this is where stands right now. The things are improving a lot. We are going to moving from the 20 weeks, 32 weeks to the 13 weeks, and we are going for the three. So, this is the way the things happen actually. And we can see in a more better way, whether it is outside, whether it is inside, what is the flow, how it is going, how it is moving, everything we can go in a better way, actually. So this, so is, this a is a way we can see the anatomy. The things has improved in a thus way. You can see the anatomy of the arch as well in a, by the color Doppler as well. So that Doppler flow mapping provides a non-invasive method for studying in the fetal cardiovascular system. And to handle the dynamicity of this heart, actually, color Doppler is an ideal tool. That's what we want to know. So inflows through the AV valves, outflows through the seminal valves, flows in the aortic arch, flow in the arterial duct, everything, the flow in the pulmonary veins, direction of the flow, caliber of the vessels, and the small vessels. So these are the important parts about the color Doppler. So that's why the color Doppler is there. Normal and abnormal communications, presence or absence of flow, overflows incompetency, aberrant anatomy, where it is located and where it is. So this color Doppler is actually looking the heart in the other way around. That's what it is giving an other way around. So this is a landmark paper by Linda or uh, Allen, which is in 1990. She has described so many structural anomalies by putting a color Doppler in the fetal echo. She has introduced that actually. So the color Doppler, the basic prerequisites, as already sir is described basically, it is about the imposing the color Doppler in the two uh, gray cells in it. So naturally, 2D has to be very perfect before putting the color box section. That's what, what we want to see. That has to be perfect. That is my stressing on. And it is everyone we know that is blue away and red towards that we know actually. Color persistence should be minimized. And that region of interest box, that has to be very much, very minimal actually. That has to be very narrow. If it is more wider, it is going to have more kind of distribution of in informations will be more wider. So that will be more uh, actually disturbing towards us and what for the pulse repetitive prf it has to be according to the organ what structure we want to see if it is a venous structure the prf has to be very low if it is a highly vascular structure like lvot i'm going to see it has to be that prf at least four to five it is according to the patient's uh, settings actually different patients will tell you different settings so it is according to the depth of the image if it is a higher depth then we can have the higher PR, but the transposition has to be there also. There the so there is an optimizing of color flow Doppler has to be the there. LBOT like LBOT has a flow of almost 50 to 110, flow. even the RBOT, the even the blood flow in the pulmonary around, veins, it is around less than 20 around centimeter. The around the term, it will be like 40 centimeter. So according to that, we have to adjust everything. So appropriate transposition, what sir has already done, optimize angle of the isolation that actually color flow top and it's actually should be more than it should not be more than 30 degrees and imaging with the less depth is, is more important that will only increase the prf and set the scale of energy with the expected vessels so these are the structural things but we need the different different kind of settings actually so these are the things which are the, has to be in the machines with the all kinds of settings what already sir has told so other variations of doppler in the echo that is a power doppler dynamic high definition flow radiant flow and all 
R Doppler and the color flow uh, Doppler has got a differentiation in that doesn't it doesn't need any angular phase ion solution. And it is more high definition wise. It can give you edge depth actually, more edge and more defined mode. Lack of information about the direction of the flow. That is one of the disadvantages in the power Doppler actually. And high definition flow, as we know, it is actually with the good resolution and the good sensitivity, good to sew. And radiant flow that we have already saw, that is in the enhanced defined vessels, reduction in the motion artifact and the slow flow, that is a super for the microvascular. Maybe it is a brain, maybe it is a heart. Usually first trimester cardiac are done in the slow flow. That is more better. Pulmonary veins are known in the slow flow actually. So this is the way we can count down from the four chamber inflows, outflows, LVOT, RVOT, then according to the arch view, then the ajagas vein as well. Everything we can see, the four pulmonary vein we can see coming out of the, from the A. It is a 20 weeks heart, 19 weeks heart. And in this way, we can see the thiam box bounded by the internal mammary artery and going to the neck vessels about the two subclavian artery. Everything we can see. And here we can see the all these things, the pulmonary veins, and the other uh, uh, right and left arterial, uh, those kind of uh, uh, appendages also it can be seen very properly. If your setting is very good and your Doppler parameters are very good, what kind of Doppler has to be used for which organ that has to be decided by your brain? Nobody can tell you anything. This preset is fixed and this preset is fixed. It is according to your organ. It is according to what you want to see and for which patients, which anomalies you can want to see. That also depends actually. So this is the way we can count down the thing. LVOT can be seen so nicely also in this way, in a very defined way, actually. So this is the way we can see everything and every, starting from the mitral valve, starting from the OT valve, starting from the pulmonary valves, everything can be count down within two seconds, actually. And this is a first trimester cardiac view we can see. These are the things. These are the power Doppler first. Uh, image is about the power Doppler, then the radiant flow, then about the slow flow. This is about the first time still cardiac. Again, I'm telling it's about the probe. It has been taken by a trans probe, which has got a very higher frequency rate than the RM7C as well. So what the trans probe can pick you up, you cannot pick up by the trans abdominal probe. So that's why a first time still cardiac is always by the trans is best actually, what we have gone through. So this is the way, even in the first trimester cardiac, we can see fourth chamber, we can see the all kinds of uh, tracks, outflow tracks, as well as the pulmonary veins and everything. This is about the sagittal sections, what we are seeing, ductal arch, as well as the sagittal sections with the radiant flow and everything. The all kinds of flow parameters has been given in all these things. Even the right atrium vestibule, what are the draining vessels, which are the ductus venosus, as well as everything we can see in the detail actually. The detailing can be done by the color Doppler only, not by the structural thing. And it is by the tissue Doppler, it may not have a very much used, but we can define only the structural things, nothing more than that actually. Actually, it is not, may not be so much of helpful actually. So the color flow science, it has got a possible cardiac defect. That has to be count down actually. Uh, intra uh, ventricular septal communications can uh, ear into the VSD. So I can directly go for the uh, anomalies to show how the things are happening actually. The turbulent flow that can give you an impact of the val uh, valvular aortic stenosis or something, the flow is not happening, then it is aortic atresia. So this kind of thing. So this is a case of ductal, uh, ductus venosus agenesis. We can see the IVC should be the right atrium vestibule should perceive the blood flow from the ductus venosus. Rather, the ductus venosus is not going to the right atrium. It is going directly to the IVC actually. And this is a case of uh, TGA with the VSD with the pulmonary atresia and LSBC. We can see there is a big VSD, inlet VSD that is hanging over there. And we can see the, uh, uh, we can see a one vessel in place of uh, two vessels in place of three vessels actually. And that is the LSBC in the corner. So these are the things we can see. And the most important thing is about the VSD, it has to be the bi-directional pole. Why this bi-directional flow happens actually? What happens when the ventricular inflows happens, there is equal pressure are maintained actually. But when there is a VSD, the right ventricular pressure can increase. So the flow from inside and outside that can happen and that can cause a bi-directional pole flow. And you can see the by the putting a gate there also, Doppler gate. So this is a case of TAPVC having the vertical vein from the right atrium directly draining to the brachiocephalic vein that we can see very well here. So the color Doppler can actually create a full of information that we can uh, go for a assessment as well as counseling of the patients as well as informing about everything. So this is the way the things happen.
this is the case of lsbc that can be a uh, pattern in a uh, uh, every aspect of the thing in all kinds of doctor and it can be defined with the very kind of things the last image is about the cigar pipe sign we can see very beautifully how it is coming up and uh, what is happening even a single lsbc uh, bc isolated lsbc can cause actually chromosomal anomaly in 7 to 12 percent so there lies the importance where we have to go for a chromosomal aberrations thinking also we have to think in a little bit lateral thinking also many a times so this is a case of a double aortic arch we can see the both the arch are coming later on it will be seen actually the right aortic arch and the left aortic arch they are going above the trachea and they are going bounded by and causing a, a vascular ring actually this is quite dangerous so we have to counsel like this so even in a low end machine it is a machine of s10 those who are the e10 so these kind of machines also can give you a better image if you can have a good pre-settings with the vascular flow in a proper way and you can give a better way so this is a, a case of only right, right aortic arch it has been cut around 34 weeks th three days so we can see and uh, this is the way the things happen actually we can see beautifully many many things actually this is a case of durb but it was with the multiple anomalies as well and this case you can see there is a small very much left ventricle diminished very much left ventricle and the other vessels which are coming that is the great artery is coming almost major portion from the right ventricle that is the uh here the uh, overriding outer is more than 50 percent that is happening in the drb so it has been cut the color flow doppler has been intimidated with the 4d and we can see the vascular supply properly that could not be seen actually in the 2d image we can only imagine but when we have cut through the 4d we can imagine actually it's a case of a DORB, double outlet right ventricle. This is a case of uh, Ibsen's anomaly where we can see the right ventricle, the uh, tricuspid valve is totally apex. Uh, it is moving towards the apex. It is totally displaced actually, where we can see the colored flow jet is also coming to the apex. So where we can diagnose it is uh, Ibsen's anomaly. It was with a very poor prognostic go score and uh, we have referred this case outside to the periodic cardiologist only. So this is the way the beautifully, even in the low end machines, we can diagnose a lot many things. What after putting a collar doppler actually with a small kinds of wherever we are sitting, wherever we are doing the job that has to be done very perfectly, whatever I am seeing actually. So where we can see this is a hypoplastic left heart syndrome with the aortic atresia and the mitral atresia. The blood flow is not moving at all and we cannot see the outer as well as in the three vessel view. If we are following from the cardiac chambers, the six segments, what we are following, whatever we are doing the fetal echo, doing the norms, whatever we have seen in the normal only to differentiate the abnormal. That is the way we are doing. This is a case of common atrial trunk that has been put through the 4D actually. The color has been imposed in the 4D. Then we could diagnose that the pulmonary artery is actually arising above the trunkal valve. That was not possible in the 2D actually. We have tried a lot, struggled a lot to diagnose, but it has been diagnosed after the putting the color doppler and with the 4D imaging, then we could diagnose this pulmonary artery branch is coming above the trunkal valve. So that's why we could put a diagnosis for the common atrial trunk. And this is a case of tricuspid dysplasia. We can very well see there is a wide difference between the tricuspid valve that is not approaching towards the apex, that is not moving towards the apex. Rather, it is in the place and having the dysplastic valve and causing this kind of Doppler activities. That is more than almost 140, actually. The Doppler pulse of uh, 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 peak systolic velocity was uh, going above 140. So we could diagnose there is a causing a right arterial enlargement, which is it is due to by the tricuspid dysplasia. And we can see the color flow jet that is coming in midway between. There is a gross uh, disparity between the instance and the tricuspid because about the color jet, how it is moving actually. So this is about the regurgitation of the right atrium, which is happening just midway between. It is not going to the apex actually. So this is, we could diagnose it's a uh, case of a tricuspid dysplasia. So this is a, a case of a AVSD unbalanced uh, in a very low end machine basically, but we could diagnose not only from the flaps, but from the blood flow also that is happening. Almost the blood is coming like a huge from the two atrium to the ventricle actually. So we can see there is no actually differentiation of any kind of valves actually. So this is the way the AVSD happens actually. This is a 2D image that we cut through the thing. So this is actually very rare case of a single atrium with the single ventricle with single outlet. 
that we can see and with the color flow also we could imagine the only one inflow and outflow is going that we can see very well wherever in a normal four chamber we see the two inflows and outflows are coming but here it is a two oh, one uh, inflow and outflow are coming and only one outlet is coming actually we have got a autopsy specimen with this uh, actually this patient so this is a case of a uh, pericardial tumor actually wherever it is not necessary of the color doppler but it is actually necessary to see the fourth chamber how it is working how it is it's compressed and how is the outlet is obstructed due to the cardiac tumor so that is why it is very much necessary and it has been operated the baby is doing well as well and we can see there is a gross aortic obstruction actually there is a gross aortic obstruction was there still the patient is doing well and everything has been finished and this is another pericardial tumor and it is quite uh, it is actually rhabdomyoma sarcoma we can see actually i couldn't have the this is a very old image of mine actually i couldn't have the uh, color flow doppler but we can see it is a case of a tricuspid atresia with the pulmonary atresia and the pulmonary is becoming very thin and less than the aorta so but these are the case where we are going to put the color doppler you can see very well the about the vsd as well as the thinning of the pulmonary how it is happening and the retrospective flow of the pulmonary as well this is a case of critical aortic stenosis basically causing the ballooning of the aorta and uh, we can see the color flow how it is thinning to that ballooning actually so this is about the color flow color flow is a very brilliant thing even after the structural thing what we are seeing but it is doubly secured you about your diagnosis that is about the color doppler actually obviously the power doppler is there putting a gate uh, regarding the uh, pic systolic velocity counting on all those criteria are there but still it has got a role definitely and this is a case of a tetralogy of fallow with the my medical college machine so we can see only uh, the things whatever it is happening but still we are diagnosing with the low end machine also and uh, with the overriding outer we can see all the Uh, things that is happening with the reversal flow of the pulmonary it is happening here and it is a actually tetralogy of fallow with overriding out here with the pulmonary atresia with the malignant vas so it's a christmas sign with the portal hepatic veins crossing around the thing it is called christmas sign actually so thank you all and happy imaging it is one of my passion the imaging and uh, regarding our theories are there always with us but passion of imaging is something that pulls you out from the box actually so that happens with the life thank you so much thank you so much